Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. What I'm in the process of doing, as you have seen on some of the Facebook posts and things like that, is that I believe uh, certain baits are poured wrong because they don't match the actual fish. For example, a thread fin shad. I think there's too much emphasis is placed on putting that chartreuse lateral line um, and putting the kill dot and the, the purplish or the lavender back or whatever you want to call it, you know, whatever color you choose to put it in. I think there's needs to be a whole lot more silver. I think the shad dots need to be higher. I think the, the yellow or the chartreuse line, I think that's an important thing that needs to be higher up in it too. Um, and I think there's very, need, the back needs to be very little, just a faint line across it. So today, we're going to try to pour one. May turn out great, may not, but we're going to go. Let's go. All right, a couple of things that I've noticed that also people tend to pour the, the sexy shads with just a white or clear. After doing a lot of looking at the shads and having them, they have that glisten. So what I've done is I've went with a light pearl. Uh, usually you would go 20 drops for a half a cup or more. I'm going about eight drops. So it's got a, it's almost a translucent pearl. So I've got it up to the temperature now. Um, you want to try to have it about 350 when you're pouring. That's perfect for the plastic. And so we're going to pour and we're, <clears throat> we're going to pour it pretty high, pretty, pretty high. And then um, you know, it's gonna, we're gonna have it really high in the air and then uh, up on the bait, almost to the point where, um, and then what I've got is I've got a, 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 a real thread fin shad on my computer over here. So we're gonna pour this up very, very high. I put my shad dot a lot higher and then we're gonna go from there. Now, one of the things that, um, that I have seen is that I think uh, a lot of people don't pour the chartreuse's yellow tail either. I think that that's got to be something I, I never hardly see it. So I'm going to start. We're going to see how this turns out. It may or may not turn out good. But um, as always, whenever you're pouring tri-laments and things like that, you want to jack that temperature up to about 300, 300 degrees. And that'll help the, the plastics bond together. Um, so... Here we go. We may get good. We may not. It may be horrible. We don't know this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start pouring from the front. That way it runs to the back and I'm going to keep it on the front. And what that's trying to do is I'm trying to keep it from running into the tail. So if I keep it the, coming from the front, it'll actually cool some by the time it gets to the tail portion and it won't actually run over into the uh the boot tail part. And so we were able to pour it very high and I will scoot back a little bit because I need it to go just a little bit further right there. And then we'll just try to keep pouring it and, and adding the coats and pushing it back just to the edge. And there it is, it is perfect. One last drop, get in there. And I have pushed it all the way back um, and I will use this uh, the smaller one. What I've done is I pushed it all the way back to just about the boot tail. Now, that's uh, that's where we want to go with this. Now, this is very, very hot, um, you know, so I've been to put on my gloves to pour and things like that because the plate's getting hot. But we've poured uh, a, a translucent pearl body, and we poured it up really, really high. I mean, extremely high. So now we're going to uh, do two things. We're going to pour the tail we're going to do it in the solid uh, chartreuse that matches the lateral line. And what I've done is I've made a chartreuse pearl. I love pearl. Pearls just look so realistic in the water. Um, when you're pouring bait fish and things like that, they have those translucent or those, uh, I call them psychedelic colors. They just, you know, always color changing and things like that. So we're going to turn the camera off. I'm going to heat up this chartreuse, chartreuse pearl, beautiful color. And then we're gonna pour the tail, the thin lateral line, and then we're gonna go over the top with a um, a smoke, a, like a, a, a violet smoke pearl, let me see the exact color, purple smoke pearl, 
and I added just a hint of green in there because I've seen it on um, thread finish yet. I just had that green from the color change and the lights like that. So I got just a hint of green, the color change, I think it's gonna look wonderful. So hold on, let's warm it up and then we'll come right back. All right, guys, we've got the uh, the chartreuse pearl. It's a beautiful color. Heat it up. We're running it a tad bit hotter than the 350. Now, let me tell you why. It's at 365. When I pour it in here, I want it to be very runny because I'm trying to put a thin, thin layer because I think the chartreuse line, in my opinion, in a lot of things, is too thick. I think it's too thick. So I'm going to start the head, work back, and then fill in the tail. So, but I'm going to pour um, pretty quickly because I want a thin layer. I don't want it to be thick at all. So really thin, and I'm going to just kind of make my way to the back pretty quickly. And then we're going to fill the tail up all the way with this chartreuse. It may or may not look good, but I'm going to tell you something. I think it's going to look fantastic. Now, we've got just a thin, thin cavity. Uh, I'm going to show you a little trick how I keep it. Um, a thin, thin cavity. Um, I want, I want this to be tilted back just slightly. So I'm going to put it, build myself a ramp. That way I can feel this tail in all the way and not have to worry about the front part filling in at this moment in time. Uh, this will this will cure just a little bit. Uh, look at there. Well, that is awesome. Already looks amazing. I can't wait to fill it in with this next step. Hold on. All right, guys. Now we've got our top layer. And it is a very, very thin layer. So now that we've elevated it enough, the tail should be set. We're going to go ahead and remove this knife. Now remember that knife's going to be hot. It's sitting on a 300 degree hot plate. Now we're going to take our top layer. It's flat. And we're going to fill it until it just caps off the whole top. It should look wonderful when it's all said and done. It might not, but I think it's going to look great. Um, I'm going to fill in, make sure it fills that head in real good. And then just walk, work my way back slowly, one continuous motion. Taking my time. And when I get to the back, this is almost like a stair step effect as it stair steps over that, that chartreuse. And I did a little bit of an over pour right there, but it's gonna be okay. We'll be okay. It's not going to be absolutely perfect because literally this is the first time I've ever tried this and you're getting to see it on camera. Um, so it's to me, it's pretty nifty. Might add just a touch more right there. I can get just a touch to come out. Come on. Oh, I love those little drops just dropping out just like a little glaze. And if you do mess up a little bit, that's what they make the old heat gun for. I'm learning that too. All right, so here's where we're at now. We're through with all of this. This is the, the thing, and I'll, I'm going to go ahead and kill the heat. I'm not going to rush this. I'm going to let it cool down naturally. It's going to take 10 or 15 minutes. Now, if you're doing a bunch, you might want to have yourself some uh, a lot of molds where you can do this, five or six molds. But remember, this is supposed to be fun, and this is all about experimenting and learning. And take your time. Enjoy yourself. And enjoy pouring the baits. That's what's fun. Now, when you get through with this, we're going to let it set up. We're going to let it cool down naturally, and that takes 10 or 15 minutes. That's why when I tell people, when I make the baits for people, um, they're, they're really, some of them can be really time-consuming and labor-intensive, especially the, the bull brim, like uh, boss brim, and then the bluegill. Um, this bluegill is amazing. 
Uh, matter of fact, the top coat to this is the top coat we're using in this one, but not gonna be near that thick. Um, it's got a beautiful purplish tint with it. Just a little bit of green there, kind of gives you that rainbowish. And where I'm hoping with the uh, chartreuse under it in such a thin, thin layer that you actually get some of the, the chartreuse under it too. And that's an awesome feature. We're gonna let it cool down and uh, we'll open it up, check it out, maybe stick an eye on that bad boy. And who knows, we may have created the perfect uh, sexy shad or I'm gonna change the name on my website. I'm gonna change mine. To, I'm gonna start calling mine the K-Shad because my wife's sexy, I believe. Her name's Katie. And so I'm gonna call it the K-Shad. That is it. Sexy Shad, that's for Strike King. Double G, we call it the K-Shad. Now you know. All right, guys, here we are. We're gonna pull it out. Um, I, I don't know. Um, the mold's still pretty warm, but it's not just smoldering hot. But it, it is warm, though. So uh, we're gonna see how this turns out. Let me get the old gloves on. Where's my other one? Head two somewhere. There it is. <clears throat> we want to make sure we don't burn ourselves. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pull this apart. Um, if it'll come apart. Yeah, it's going to come apart just right. What side is it going to go to? It always does that. It always wants to go to one side. Like the tail wants to go to one side and then the body wants to go to the other. Never understood that. I try to get it to go to one side because it looks cool when you pull it apart. And uh, I can't ever get it to do it, but I did this time. Wow, I'm impressed. I really like it. Oh, wow. Let's uh, let's take a look at it. Now, I can definitely do some improvement. I'm gonna give you a good look at the camera. That, to me, is what a, a shad look. Look how thin that yellow line is at the top. Um, that um, I'm going to need to work on the tail just a little bit better. Um, and the top of that, um, I kind of probably should have just bled that all the way down. Um, I didn't. As you can see there, I kind of stopped at the tail. Um, but I believe, in my true opinion, that this, and let me put it back up in there for you, that is what a, shad, a thread fin shad looks like. This is a thread fin shad. Uh, let me stick some eyes on it, or at least one eye on it, and uh, we'll see what she looks like there. Um, we're gonna grab a, just a little drop of super glue. This is the absolute best. All you need is a little, just a dot right there. This, this Loctite super glue, you can buy the liquid or the gel. That stuff just doesn't mess up. <laughs> It just don't mess up. I love it. You, I left the cap off of it the other day for like four, like uh, two days. And uh, let's make sure we got our eyeball right. We'll put that on there. Now I want you to notice some features of this. We got a higher shad dot than normal. Higher shad dot than normal. Um, the eye, but very, very thin very thin top line. Now you see how dark that is. When the sun hits it, you're gonna be able to see it from a lot of different angles. Now I wish I'd have worked on this tail just a little bit more. I mean, it's not gonna delaminate or anything, but it, uh, I, needed to, I probably should have run it all the way down to the bottom and covered that chartreuse up, but I'm very happy the way the tail turned out. Um, I'm very happy with this whole thing. That right there, um, that's getting closer. As you can see, that's kind of a greenish, but when you turn it to the side, it's got that purple. I love that. I mean, that right there, that is a shad. I should have run it down just a little bit further. That's gonna aggravate the dog out of me. The next one I do, I will run it down a lot further. Um, I even like the tail. I, I like how the, um, I like how the tail has the chartreuse because that's what a thread fin shad has. It has that yellow in the tail that matches the uh, chartreuse lateral line. Um, there ain't nothing about this bait that ain't bad to the bone. So, but guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Very long video, but I don't know, man. I just enjoy making baits. I just enjoy it. And I can't believe it took me this long to get to, to, to make baits. And, uh, and I gotta tell you, um, it's, uh, it's been, a, it's a real, it's a joy. But thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Ring the bell.